What's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and today we're checking out Spire. Now this is a synth that's been around for a very long time and has stood the test of time because it's still one of the most talked about synths. It's still at the top of the lists and it still sounds absolutely phenomenal. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just walk you through what it's capable of. I just wanna point this out. I've got these pads right now. If I come in and just solo this channel and just listen to these pads. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. Those sounds so good. This is just a preset called Munich uh, that I found right here. And I just flipped this open. And while I just flipped it open, we might as well talk about it. So it looks like you get 128 presets with this, but that isn't even close because this is one bank. And if you come over here to the menu, you can select from any of these eight banks right here. So, I mean, the 128 isn't even scratching the surface. If I pop over here to something like bank three, we got another 128 right here. And again, I mean, we've got strings, pads, plucks, drums, so on. There's some sequences in here somewhere too, but let me just go ahead and check something out. Let's check out this pad. So super dope. Let me see if I can find those sequences because I think they were pretty cool too. I think it was in that. Yeah, so we got sequences right here. So it's capable of quite a lot. And if you come down here, you can actually see the step sequencer. There's an arpeggiator as well built in and tons of functionality wrapped up inside of this thing. So let me just walk you through what's inside of it. The main drivers here are the four oscillators. And if you come over, uh, it's really cool because you can load up a shape right here. And if you look, you say, well, wait a minute, that's not a lot of different shapes. But if I load the classic right here, I can then choose from these wave tables essentially, or wave shapes, and let's say I want a guitar, then I can actually mix between the guitar. So if I'm at wet right here, I'm at the guitar shape 100%, but I can actually mix between that classic shape with that guitar shape and anywhere in between. So this might be better on something like a plug. So that's like on a piano. And what we need to do is maybe turn off these other oscillators. So you can see here, we're really uh, changing up the sound by morphing between those different wave shapes. The other thing I'd like to point out is these control A and control B actually are different depending on which wave shapes you're choosing. So they're going to be able to, they're actually going to be changing up and that's why they're just called control A. It's going to be different for different, um, different patches. We can control the octave. Uh, you can do the fine tuning here as well. Double clicking anything sets it back to the original state. Okay, so after that, we've got some detuning and density. We have unison mode. We can actually put up to nine different voices here. We can spread those voices out differently depending on what we choose here. And okay, let me actually jump into the envelope. So this envelope by default is gonna be controlling the cutoff from the first filter up here. You actually get two of them. So that what I did there was just make sure the sustain was on a little bit so we can hear it kind of play out. And it's a better way to hear the kind of unison mode over here. 
So that's nine voices spread over one octave. Three octaves. And you can see here we got a bunch of different choices. So I'm going to go back to one, uh, one octave for a second, drop it back down. Now you also have polyphony right now is in poly. Uh, we also have mono and we have four different types and it kind of gives you an idea of what each one of those types is, portamento and legato, uh, flow or retrigger. And here we have polyphonic portamento or legato. The glide control is over here. Oh, let me jump back into here. So after this, we have some other effects here. This is like the filter send. We can send it to filter one or filter two or anywhere in between a sort of mix. We've got our panning knob and a width control. All three of these are per oscillator. So if I click oscillator two, you'll see that everything inside of here is kind of switched. That's because these are dedicated to each one of the oscillators. And you can see the kind of arrow shows you what's happening. So you pick your oscillator, then you go to here, then you go to here, and then you go into your filter. Pretty, pretty clever if you ask me. So after that, we've got a bunch of different effects. We've got a shaper, flanging and phaser, chorus, delay and reverb, two different reverb types. We have ping pong or synced or unsynced. Inside of the filter here, we've got a bunch of different filter types and the manual will tell you about these different filter types. I don't know them off the top of my head, but they all sound fantastic and very unique. So here we go, we got a pretty pleasant plucky sound right now. And we've got envelope controls. Number Envelope number one is gonna be your kind of main amp envelope. And you'll actually notice that we actually have more than just ADSR. We actually have a second slope. So we have our primary slope and then a secondary slope. So we can actually make the sound come back up before it goes back and dips down to the release. It's very, very cool. So we have four different envelopes. You'll see here we got envelope one, envelope two, envelope three, envelope envelope four. Then we also have four different LFOs. This is all modulatable and routable inside of the matrix. You just come in here and let's just say we want to go step sequencer and then do cut off one and pull it up. So now that sort of delay is happening from the step sequencer. So if I mute the actual delay, and we get out of the matrix and come to the step sequencer. We can now uh, kind of control that and how it works. So maybe drop it down to four, drop it down to a quarter note. And then we can control that as well uh, inside of the step sequencer. We can also can control the contour right inside of this box. We can actually put more steps inside of there if we wanted to. If I come over here, something like this. So lots of control there, of course. And after that, we do have another step sequencer, completely independent from the first. So you can get some really crazy stuff going on. And then the arpeggiator, as I said. Then we've got a global EQ and compressor over here as well. So a really in-depth synth. And one thing that I really like about it is it's not like layers on top of layers. It's pretty straightforward, easy to use, and the sound quality is absolutely incredible. There are also four like kind of macro modulators over here as well. Again, everything is routable from the, the matrix over here. And you can see that we've got up to five different pages. So what's that 15 different sources triggering up to four different parameters at any one time so uh, an incredible amount of modulation possibilities as well let's check out a few more of these presets before i wrap this video up though this bsq is actually bass sequence so really gnarly bass that sounds phenomenal. 
Let's check out some of these effects. Let's check out a different bank. Jump into select bank. Let's check out bank four. So here are some of the arpeggios. One thing that is also really, really cool that I've noticed while I've been slipping through these presets is that the actual delay and reverb from that preset will stay even after you've completely switched the instrument. So <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty cool and pretty unique, I think. Most other ones will just shut off abruptly while you're switching through presets. So that's pretty cool. So the thing I really, really like about this beyond the sort of modulation capabilities is just the diverse range of sounds you get out of this thing. I mean, those pads that I had in the beginning for this kind of demo project were blowing my mind. You can get really crazy effects. You can get really big bass sounds that sound really full and rich. You can get some really nice leads that are just sounding like, I mean, just huge they just sound so big and full of character and it's it just seems on the face value like such a small synth but i it's really not it is just absolutely phenomenal and one last thing you can kind of change the cosmetics here i've got an 150 percent to make it big for you guys in this video but you can easily change up the theme here you can see we've got a dark theme and the original here, if you want to go a lighter theme. And, you know, it's really customizable in that sense as well. So if you're looking to buy a synth this year, even those things are a couple of years old, I highly suggest having it in your arsenal because there's always going to be like one of those ones you could just grab, throw it on there and get what you're looking for quickly and have it sound phenomenal each and every time. So anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Plug and Boutique. Links in the video description if you want to check out Spire on our website. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video. Oh,